Okay, so you've got your finished project in Shotcut and you're ready to export. First thing you're going to want to make sure you did was save your file. So go to File, Save As, name it whatever you want, pick the destination folder where you can find it, and click Save. Now you're ready to export. Click Export here at the top, from Timeline, because that's where your project is. Format, I choose MP4 because it's compatible with just about everything, including YouTube. Now under the video tab, we'll look at resolution. It should have already been picked up based on whatever videos you've imported to Shotcut. So for example, I recorded in UHD, so 3840 by 2160. If you recorded in 1080p, then you just change that to 1920 by 1080. Aspect ratio, we're gonna keep it 16 to nine because that's standard for today. Frames per second, I recorded in 30 FPS, so I'm gonna put it as that. If you recorded in 60 FPS, put it as 60. Scan mode, we're going to choose progressive. Field order, the interlacer, interpolation, none of these settings matter because we chose progressive and not interlaced scan mode. Now, because I have a good CPU, I chose parallel processing. If you have a bad processor, then you might want to untick that. Now let's go to the codec page. For the codec, I chose libx64. This is the H.264 codec that is supported by YouTube. It's also pretty common and good for compression. Rate control, I've looked at quality-based VBR, constant bitrate, average bitrate. I found constant bitrate gives me the best result. For the bitrate, if you're recording in 1080p 30fps, I would set this to about 20, 20m. If you recorded in 1080p 60fps, I'd set it to about 40 or 50M. Now, because I recorded in 4K, the highest option you can choose is 80M, but I found if you type 100M, it actually gave me a better rate. Now, the lower the bit rate or the megabits per second, the more compression is gonna take place, the more artifacts and the less quality your video is gonna come out to be. I chose 100M because I went to my source footage, right click, go to properties, details, and my total bit rate was 47m, or 47 megabits per second. Now normally I would just choose 50m for this. The problem was after compressing through H.264, it ended up looking more like 27m, so I just doubled the bitrate. Buffer size can stay. GOP or group of pictures, you want closed GOP. What that means is you look at the FPS of your video, and you just cut that in half. So if you shot at 30 FPS, your GOP would be 15. If you shot at 60 FPS, your GOP would be 30. B frames, I leave it at two. I click dual pass to ensure good quality. Codec thread zero, don't disable the video. We like the video. Audio, sample rate, again, if you look at test footage or whatever video you imported, go to properties. If you scroll down to audio, you'll see the audio sample rate, 48 kilohertz. Just match it to that. Now you'll see the bitrate is 250. I leave it at 384 because you really don't get much compression by lowering it. Just leave it as a high quality. Codec, AAC, rate control. Also put that constant bitrate. Don't disable the audio unless you want to disable your audio. Other, that doesn't matter. So now we're going to click export file at the bottom here. Now you can name it whatever you want example test but make sure you put .mp4 at the end or it won't play if you upload it to YouTube. So test.mp4 and then save. So now you'll see on the right it says jobs 13% and there's two of them. There's two because under the codec option I clicked dual pass. So it's going to encode it once and it's going to encode it again and make sure that there's no quality missing. So we'll just wait for this to finish now the first pass is complete, just waiting for the dual pass to finish. It's good to keep in mind that YouTube is going to recompress whatever comes out here if you're uploading to YouTube, but I like to give them the best quality source possible. Now if you lower your bitrate, you'll end up with a smaller file size, but before I upload to YouTube, knowing they're going to recompress it, I like to give them the best source footage I can. So if you wanted to completely have uncompressed footage, I would actually have set my B frames to 1, 
but putting your B frames at 2 makes it for a slightly smaller file size, and you won't notice a dip in quality because there's too many frames being cluttered together anyways. Okay, the video just finished exporting, so now let's give it a shot. Yeah, quality looks the exact same as what I put in there. I right click, go to properties, details. The total bitrate is actually slightly higher than what I put in there, ensuring that there's going to be no artifacts, no lost data. Lowering the bitrate will reduce the file size, but it'll also reduce the quality, introduce new artifacts, so it's a bit of give and take. So the balance of tolerable file size versus quality loss is really up to you. One last thing, if you export your project at a larger bitrate than the source footage, you can't get more quality than what the source footage has to begin with. It's also important to keep in mind what you filmed with. For example, I filmed with a smartphone, which runs its own compression as it's being filmed. The data I took off my phone is not a raw shot video. So when you put that in Shotcut, it decompresses the already compressed video from my phone and then recompresses it when I export my project.